deprecated and obsolete tags, deprecated attributes, new semantic structural elements, new input types, new attribute syntax, new graphics capabilities, and new media elements. As we discussed previously, there is a difference between something becoming deprecated and obsolete. In older versions of HTML, things became deprecated, and deprecated means the element should no longer be used and may or may not continue to work. More times than not, it would not work. In HTML5, outdated elements become obsolete. Obsolete means that you should not use these elements, but they may still render correctly in the browser. However, even if they render correctly in the browser, the page may not validate correctly. Tags, elements, and attributes can be declared obsolete in different levels in clarification status. Obsolete but conforming means that if I try to run it through a validator, it will trigger a warning. However, it may still work in some or most browsers. Obsolete non-conforming means that it is entirely obsolete and should not be used. Chances are it will not work in different browsers. All of the obsolete tags can be found on the W3C's website, which is listed below. In the document listed on the slide before, the World Wide Web Consortium, or W3C as they are known, provides a list of tags that have become obsolete. We have tags like acronym that defines what an acronym is and instead we should be using an abbreviation. We have applets. This was a placeholder for an applet like a Java applet or some other scripting applet. Instead we should now be using the new embed or object. We had a tag called base font which declared what the base font was for all of the elements on the page. Now we should be using the CSS font family. We had big, which made text bigger. Now we should be using the CSS font size. We had blink, which caused text on the page to blink. Now we should not be using anything. Blinking and another one called marquee should not be used. I will get to marquee in just a minute. We had center, which centers text or other elements on the page. Now we should be using the CSS margin or auto, I'm sorry, text align. We had DIR, which defined a directory list. Now we should be using an unordered list. And we had the font tag, which de defined the font size, the face that was to, to be used, and the color. Now we should be using the CSS font family, font size, and color. Some other obsolete tags are the frame set. Now what the frame set was is it declared a, an area for a frame. And what a frame was was a way to break up my page so that it actually would pull in multiple HTML documents and I could have things like my links on the left side, I could have my body on the right side, I could have a header up above, and now that we have CSS, frames have gone away and we should be using CSS or, if we have to, use an iframe. We had an IS index which declared a single line input field on a form. Now we are actually going to simply make this part of the form. We had a marquee, which the marquee was the element that made text scroll across the screen. Most people don't like the marquee. It is declared to be not conforming with uh, disabilities, so therefore we should be using nothing. We don't want to do a marquee. Uh, the no frames, this was if I was using a frame set, what should be displayed if their, their browser didn't support frames. Now we use the CSS page layout options. We had S and strike, and these two would actually strike through text. In the new HTML5 standards, we're supposed to use DEL if it's something that's to be marked as deleted. So if we're marking on a page that this thing is strike th um, striked through because it's to be removed, we do DEL. Otherwise, we're going to use S for a strike through. We had TT, which would mark up the text so that it looked like something that was input on a keyboard. Instead, now we have a KBD tag. 
And then the last one that's listed is underlining this is a U, and now we should be using the CSS text decoration. In this lesson, I want to show to you some of the new HTML5 tags that will be available. The list of tags can be found on the W3C's website, and they include a complete list of all of the currently supported tags. It can be located at this address. The World Wide Web Consortium actually has a website called w3schools.com which provides information on all of the different features of HTML and any other standard for which they are responsible for administering. So one of the, uh, one of the documents that they have is this HTML5 new elements and if we go through the document we can see that we have things like articles, asides, uh, we have details, dialogue, fig caption and figure, which we've used already, footer we've used already, header we've used already. A lot of these different tags we've used, uh, some of them you will use every once in a while, not very often, but there are a couple in here that I want to show you how to use. Specifically, I want to use the section, I want to use nav, which we've already used, I want to use main, I want to use header, footer, and our aside, an article. Those are going to be our major new HTML5 elements that we should be using on every website that we make. For the purpose of this lesson, I created a new HTML document. It's called newelements.html. And what I have done is I added some elements to our style.css document so that all of our documents will be formatted similarly. So all of my new documents, I'm going to create a link to pull in style.css and now what I will get is something that looks like this where it's Arial it has this bluish gray background to it our text is a lighter gray and then when I hover over it it becomes uh, underlined it gets black and the idea here is, is to start making this look like a website rather than just simply a collection of individual documents remember a website is nothing more than documents that exist in the same folder or different folders but they all have a common theme. There is no actual thing called a website. We have web pages and if I theme a bunch of web pages similarly and I link between them then we consider them to be a website but it's actually more of an abstract idea. So a website is nothing more than just individual HTML documents that are all formatted the same that I have linked together so that way we can provide what appears to the end user to be one solid flowing document. By linking these new documents to that style you'll notice that my new document that is called new HTML5 elements is styled like that index.html file is. And now because I've linked all these documents to the same style sheet if I make a change to the style sheet, all of the pages that are linked to it will automatically receive these changes. What I want to show to you is the old way to create sections of your website. Now when we started using CSS, all we had to play with were divs and spans. And a div made a block level element, so therefore I could actually break things up into sections. So what we would do is we'd have a div id equals header, div id equals nav, div id equals content and if we had things on the right hand side that had to do with things like our uh, advertisements or links or anything like that would go on the right hand side over here and we'd say div id equals right column and then at the bottom we'd have a div that said id equals footer in the new way of doing it we change those so we are semantically changing those to header which we've already played with nav which we've played with and footer which we've played with However, in the previous lessons, what I have done is over here, I have created something like div id equals content. And really what I want to do is I want to create a section that contains articles. So we are going to make our articles over here. And so what I'll have is a section of things that can contain multiple articles. So I'll have one section, what I used to call div id equals content, will now just simply be section, and it will still have an ID. Um, but then I'll also have articles down below. 
And then on the right hand side, this is what we call an aside. And this is going to be things that are related to the articles that are over here, but maybe they're loosely related. So nowadays I may have a website with an article over here with a news article, and then over here there might be something that says, because you looked at this art article, you may be interested in this also. So that's called an aside. And the idea is, is that now we give the browsers a means to break up the document, but we also will allow our search engines to know that the stuff that is contained here is the actual body of our document. And then they will know that we have articles and anything that's inside of this article is related to the same article. But because I can have multiple articles within a section, now the search engines will start to learn that if I'm talking about something like a dog in one article and I'm talking about a car in another article, the search engines will realize that they have nothing in common except for the fact that they both exist on my website. So what this does to my document is that I no longer have a div ID equals content. Now what I'm going to have is a section whose ID is equal to content. Okay, and then our section can contain things called articles. So whatever goes in here belongs to an article of, of items. And here is another article. And I can give these IDs if I want to, but I don't have to. So this is article one. And then this down here is article two. Save my page, refresh, there are my articles. Now, in, within the articles, I can do things like giving them their own headers. I can give them their own nav if I need to. Um, but really what I'm looking for is my website to have things like a newspaper article. So I have newspaper article one is listed here. It has a heading, it has maybe an author, it has things like the actual body of it, maybe a summary. That kind of stuff can be included there. And now what I can do is I can format individual articles so that maybe each article has its own border around it. The next thing that I'm going to do is after my section, which remember my section is going to be the left hand side, then I can have an aside and I call this thing uh, right uh, column or whatever I want to call it. And now whatever belongs in the aside goes here. All right, so just like my divs, I can actually format my page so the aside is floated to the right. And my section, I could set its right margin to uh, however wide the aside is. And so I can start floating things on the page just like I did with divs, but now what I am doing is I'm providing some sort of means for the browser or for search engines to understand what is contained on my page. It's no longer just a bunch of divs, it now gives it meaning. So now that I have my aside, I want to start actually modifying it a little bit. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove these IDs because we actually won't need them for the purpose of this exercise, but I can leave the IDs if I want them to be there. All right, so what I want to do is I want to manipulate my style sheet a little bit so that I can start getting these articles on the left side. So I want you to see how this works. I'm going to start with just simply providing some borders around those. So I'm going to say that my section is going to have a border of one pixel solid black. And my, um, my articles will have a border of one pixel solid blue. And then my aside will have a border of one pixel solid red. And the purpose for this is just for you to be able to see the way that this works. Okay, so you'll notice that I have this section and it is black around the outside of both articles. And then each article has a blue border around it and then the aside is actually completely outside of there and has a red border. Now like we did before with the links on the left side and the content on the right, what I want to do is I want to float my section to the left 
and this time I want to float my aside to the right. Save this and refresh. And I get something like this. Okay, now my copyright is showing up here and I don't want it there. I want it to be after all the other stuff. I want it to be where it actually belongs. So I'm going to say footer and the footer is going to be styled so that it clears all. I want it to be down where it actually belongs underneath of the rest of the articles. There we go. Okay, so what you will notice though is that my articles are real skinny and my aside is really skinny. So what we are going to do is we're going to specify a width for the section. And this time I'm going to specify the width in percentage. So I want the width of my section to be 70% of the page width. And I want my aside to be 28%. Now the problem is, is yes, these should add up to 100, but we're going to have to also account for things like the margin. We're going to have to account for things like the border. And we have a border between the section and the article. So if I try to do 30% here, it will actually throw a little bit of a fit and not line up right. Okay, so now I get something like this. All right, but I want to see what it would look like if these articles were bigger and if my aside was bigger. So what I can do is I can play with the min height and we'll set these to 400 pixels. And I'm going to do the same thing for the section and for the aside. And now I have something like this. So what I will end up with is my aside is going to be at least 400 pixels tall. And I will start putting things in here like um, news articles that are related to whatever's in the, in the section over here. And then my articles, they will grow in size, and as they get bigger, this section will automatically grow with them. So I, I wouldn't necessarily want to do them in height. This is just simply for the benefit of you seeing what it's doing. But what that does for me is it makes it where I know that my document will allow the articles to grow, and as they get bigger, so will that, um, that section. Okay, so the question is going to come up, could I have done this with dibs? And the answer is yes, I could have, but the purpose for doing it this way is now that I know that I have this thing called section, which is what I used to call div um, id equals content, and I have these things called articles, and now my search engine can look at this and say, okay, well, whatever's in article one is related to itself, but not necessarily really related to article two at all. So I'm providing a means for the search engines to actually index my site and properly realize the stuff that is on the site or on the page so that way they can index it and possibly get me listed in a search listing better. The last of the new major features for HTML5 were for graphics and media. For graphics we now have the canvas that is the newest edition and the canvas allows you to uh, make graphics. We can do the paint program like we had in the last lesson. You can do things like um, fancy fills, you can do animations, shapes, shadows, but anything that we do with the canvas requires the use of some third-party scripting language like JavaScript. And then media now uses the video and audio tags instead of the old embed and object tags. This was covered in a previous lesson where we embedded a video in a web page by simply using the video tags. In this lesson, you learned about the differences between deprecated and obsolete tags. We covered some deprecated attributes that should not be used and also deprecated tags. Some of the new semantic and structural elements. Some of the new input types the new attribute syntax, new graphics capabilities, and new media elements. And lastly, you learned how to properly lay out a web page using the section, article, and a side container elements. <laughs>